All right. So uh, this is for my Algebra 1 students. They have a class quiz that's happening on Monday. So a reminder that you will not have class on Monday. And so you have a class quiz that's due at Tuesday at midnight. And what we're doing right now is a review for your class quiz on Monday. Remember, 10 questions from this out of the 23 total, give or take. So be ready. Okay, if it says solve or what, by whatever method, you got to do that method. If you just put the answer, I'm going to mark it wrong. Okay, keep that in mind. You can factor this. Okay, if you notice, if we magic X this, all quadratics, you check the magic X first. Okay, so two numbers that multiply to negative six, because it's two times negative three, and then add to positive one, the number that's next to the X. Okay, the answer is are gonna be three and negative two. If you're saying, I've never done this before, stop it, you have, because we've done this a million times, okay? Here we go. In this case, take that one X and we expand the middle. Two X squared plus three X minus two X minus three. Then we group up two at a time to see what we can take out, okay? In this group right here, the only thing that I can remove or factor out is an X. So I'm left with two X plus three. And then the other group, I can't take anything out, but I'm going to put a one as a placeholder. That negative, because there's a negative here, becomes a positive. So it's 2x plus 3. I know I'm correct because those are the same. So it's going to be for the first factor, 2x plus 3. And then the other factor, x minus 1. And that is going to equal 0. Okay, once we find our two factors, we set them both equal to 0 as well as x minus 1, and we take the opposites. x equals 1, and then negative 3 over 2. Okay, here we go. Number 2 cannot be any more straightforward. All you're doing for number 2 is graphing this, and in fact, you can use good old Desmos to graph it. All right, so let's graph it the way it looks. So here we go. 2 minus x squared equals negative x. 2 minus x squared equals negative x, negative x. And notice how it's these two x-intercepts, two and negative one. All you do is find the x-intercepts and then voila, you're done, okay? So x equals two, x equals negative one. You use Desmos, okay? There should not be any questions on number two, none whatsoever, okay? Here we go. What are the coordinates of the vertex of the graph of this function? Well, remember, in order to find the vertex, yeah, we can use Desmos, but I'm going to teach you guys by hand on how to do it. Okay, so here we go. In this case, in this case, what we're doing is we're using negative b over 2 times a to find the x value of the vertex. So the b is 8. The a is 1, so it's going to be negative parentheses 8 over 2 times 1, which is negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. Then to find the y value of the vertex, we plug in negative 4 inside for the x's. So negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4 plus 1. We get 16 minus 32 plus 1. That's going to equal negative 15. So the vertex, when x is negative 4, the y, uh, the y value is negative 15. It is not hard at all. You just plug in numbers. If you go meet Grant, you're going to use it. I'm going to shake you super proud. Okay, here we go. An expression, we need to split this up into a radical that's simplified. And what we do with this is we're breaking down 140 as far as possible. Remember that every even number is divisible by 2. So we're going to take divide it by 2, that's 70. Divide that by 2 again, 35. We can divide this by 5, 5 and 7. We only have one pair that we can take out. So there's a two on the outside, and whatever that did not get paired, we multiply together. So five times seven, that's 35. And there you go. That's your answer. Voila. You're done. Okay, that's four down, 19 more to go. Here we go, kids. 
Describe the discriminants. So remember, the discriminants come from this. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2 times A. And the discriminant comes from this. Okay, if your b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, you have two answers, two solutions. Okay, if your b squared minus 4ac equals zero, you have one solution. And if your b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, you have zero solutions, no x-intercepts. Okay, there should be zero questions about this. It's basically the inside of the quadratic formula. Okay, for this one here, what is the solution of x squared plus 4x equals 3? Well, what we can do is we need to set this equal to zero. And by setting this equal to zero, I'm going to move the 3 to the other side. x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals zero. And then we magic exit. So we put um, negative three here and four here. Huh. If we try to find numbers, it's actually not possible. So guess what we get to use? We get to use the quadratic formula. And I'll put the formula here again. X equals negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus four AC all over two times A. So, we identify our A, B, and C. I'm going to do this in a different color, okay? Um, ba -doop -ba -doop. Our A is 4. Sorry, our B is 4. So X equals negative root 4, okay? Plus or minus, boop, boop, boop. 4 squared minus 4, 1. And then negative 3. All of that over 2 times 1. We then simplify, okay? So it's going to be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16. Um, plus 12 over 2, and to go a little bit further, negative 4 plus or minus radical 28 over 2, and you can leave it like this if you want. You can't break down 28, but let's just leave it like that for now, okay? You are using the quadratic formula for this, okay? If it says you need to use that method, you got to use that method, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? Here we go. Solve the systems of equations. Well, for this particular question, I'm not going to care how you do it because guess what you can use? Good old Desmos. When you use Desmos, find where they intersect. That's very important. So intersect. Okay, so we graph both functions, 5x and the x squared plus 5x minus 9. So here we go. 5x, x squared, plus 5x minus 9. And voila, we have our two answers. We scroll up, bam, that's one of them. 3 dash 3 comma 15, we go down again, bam, negative 3, negative 15, okay? So our two answers, 3, 15, and then negative 3, negative 15, okay? Use Desmos, find where they intersect, okay? That should cover seven. Here we go. Create a linear equation that intersects the parabola y equals x squared minus 3x minus 4 at two points. Well, we need, oh, it says a linear equation. And by the way, linear is y equals mx plus b, or how about this, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We're going to use this one instead because that is a linear equation, essentially, okay? Before we do that, we need to graph this function. So let's use Desmos to graph it. Okay, x squared. So let's leave this to x squared plus 3x minus 4. Okay, so there's our function. Or so it actually it's supposed to be flipped. So minus 3x plus 4. Okay, let's go up, 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 and there you go. Okay, one point. Remember, if we want to find out, there's one, there's one of them there, 0, 4. And then another one could be like right, looks like it's going to be right there essentially. 4, 8. Okay. 0, 4, 4, 8. Okay. So we know that two points, 0, 4, and 4, 8 exist as long as they cross. We need to find the slope of those two points. Okay. So here we go. 
8 minus 4 over 4 minus 0. And that's equal to 4 over 4, which is equal to 1. That is your slope. So now, we're going to then use any one of these two points. It does not matter. Let's use this one. Okay. Y minus 4 equals 1 times X minus 0. Well, there's your equation. I'm going to move the 4 over to the other side. Our final equation is 1 times X minus 0 plus 4. Voila, you got your linear equation. Find the slope first. Well, actually, graph it. Find your slope first of two points that are on the graph. Then make your equation using this. That covers eight in a nutshell. Okay. The graph of a quadratic function passes through the point 0, negative 22, and one of its x-intercepts is negative 2, comma, 0. What is the other 0 of this function? Well, here's the ordeal for this one here, okay? I know for a fact that uh, passes through the point 0, negative 22, and one of the zeros are negative 2 and 0. Um, I mean, for this one here, all you need to do is kind of use decimals for this one here, essentially. So if we use decimals for this, as a matter of fact, okay, we can actually find the x-intercepts that way, okay? So in a, as a matter of fact, let's do this. Instead of doing that, what we can actually do, let's actually set this equal to 0, 3x squared minus 5x minus 22, and let's actually magic x this real quick because we know one of the x-intercepts are negative two, zero. So I know that one of the factors are gonna be x plus two automatically, okay? Let's check it out real quick. Negative 66 and then negative five, okay? It's gonna be negative 11 and then six. So there we go. Expand this, three x squared minus 11 x plus six x minus 22. And then we factor out two at a time to see what we can take out. In this first group, I take out a three, or sorry, just an X. So I'm left with three X minus 11. In this other group, I can take out a two, three X minus 11. So there you go. So I found one of my factors, it was X plus two. And the other factor, it's three X minus 11. When I set these both equal to zero, this is the one that I wanna focus on, okay? When I set that equal to zero, I get 11 over three. That is my other x-intercept. In fact, this might be a really good question, as a matter of fact. It might be a very good question to, to maybe confuse you guys. Okay, for number 10, what is the value of x in the diagram below? Where you're using this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so we're gonna call this A, we'll call this B, we'll call this C. So I can say that this is X squared plus parentheses two X plus two squared equals parentheses two X plus three squared. And your goal is obviously to find the value of X. And remember, you're boxing method both of these. Okay, so you have X squared. I'm gonna do this off the top of my head. Okay, four X squared, four X plus four X, that's eight X, and then two times two, that's four, equals four X squared, plus six X, six X, 12 X, and then plus uh, nine. If you notice here, the four X squareds are gonna go bye-bye, so now you're left with X squared plus eight X plus four equals 12 X plus nine. Then from here, I'm gonna move these two terms to the other side to set it equal to zero. So now I've got x squared plus, now actually minus four x minus five equals zero. And guess what? This is factorable, kids. By factoring this out here, two numbers that multiply to negative five, add to negative four, it's gonna be negative five and one. x minus five, x plus one equals zero, and you're only gonna take this one. The reason why it's not gonna be negative is because there's only, you're only using um, positive answers because your dimensions are always positive. Okay, your dimensions are always positive. 
Okay, as we move forward, this one's super de duper de duper de duper simple. Why? Because check this out. First things first, I'm gonna multiply the 16 and the nine, add the X's together, the five stays alone. So you have five, a radical 16 times nine, I believe that's gonna be 144. Okay, 144 X to the power of eight. And remember, okay, we can't take the square root of 144, it's actually 12. But the big thing is X of the eight. If I divide that by two, if it's a whole number, that comes out. If there's a decimal, there's an X left inside the radical. So the square root of 144 is 12. So it's five times 12 times X to the power of four. And then 12 times five is 60. 60 X to the fourth. Voila, that's it. Okay, we are a little less than halfway done with everything. Okay, so here we go. As we move forward to the next class. Here we go, or the next question, sorry. Um, it's a fraction equal to a whole number. Well, this is not that hard, put it over one. Cross multiply, one times one is one. X squared minus one times one is just X squared minus one. Okay, move the one on the other side, two equals X squared. When I square root both sides, well, square root of two is equal to X, and remember that it's plus or minus. Voila, that's it. I need them as exact answers, by the way. We'll explain more of that uh, throughout the day. Here we go. Solve this by factoring. Yes, magic X. Again, negative 15, neg uh, positive 2, okay, 5, and negative 3. So here we go. 5X squared uh, plus 5X minus 3X minus 3, and then I group up two at a time. And I can see, I need to see what I can take out. So from here, I can take out a five and an X. We're left with X plus one here, minus three, because I can divide those both by three, X plus one. I know I'm correct because those are the same. So one of my answers are X plus one. The other answer is five X minus three. Voila, that's it. Oh, actually we're not done because I need to set this equal to zero and then find my answers. And I'm actually going to see the answers right away. Again, we take the opposites. So one of them is negative one. And then the other one is three over five. Voila, now that's it. Okay, we were about 10 questions away from being done. Okay, the profit from a business is described by this function where X is the number of items made in thousands and P of X is the profit in dollars. How many items will maximize this profit? Well, again, we're looking for the Y value of the vertex, okay? So in this case, we use the X equals negative B over 2A, or you can graph this, but we're, I'm gonna do the long way, okay? So X equals, um, B is 16, and your A is negative four. Okay, you get negative 16 over negative eight, it's two. We take two and plug it into the function. So negative four, two squared plus 16, two plus 25, okay? So four times negative four, that's negative 16 plus 32 plus 25, that's 16 plus 25, uh, that's gonna be 41. So you need 41 items to maximize the profit. Okay, that'll cover 14 in a nutshell. Here we go. Moving on now to 15. Well, notice how the squared's by itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square root both sides in order for me to find answers. Now, I'm gonna have two answers. The reason being, remember that it's plus and minus five. We have to have two equations for this. So we get two X equals six and then X equals three, voila. 2x equals negative 4, x equals negative 2, voila. Okay, that covers 15. It is that simple. Quadratic formula for this one here, but now the kicker with this one is you need to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to move the 3 to the other side. 2x squared plus 6x plus 3 equals 0. Now we use the quadratic formula, okay? 
x equals negative 6, because b is 6, plus or minus square root of 6 squared, minus 4, 2, 3, should be a 3, all over 2 times 2. By going forward, it's negative 6 plus or minus square root of 36. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24 over 4. And then I simplify negative 6 plus or minus radical 12 over 4. Voila, that's it. That is all that we're doing there. Okay, that covers 16. This one here, this one's a little bit different. The reason being is because if we go back to the last couple of chapters, we can square up both of those terms. And since there's a minus in the middle, it splits to a plus minus. Remember that the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. And the square root of 81 is 9. I can go further with this one because the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. So this one stays the same because there's a plus in the middle. We don't change that. But then this, x minus 3, and then x plus 3 is what it would be. Okay, that covers that one there. 17, done and done and done. Okay, 18. The quadratic function models a skateboarder's distance in feet. Um, after how many seconds is a skateboarder eight feet from the bottom of the hill? So eight is gonna be your D. So we're gonna set this equal to eight. So eight equals three, negative three X squared plus 16 to solve for x, okay? So we move the 16 over, we get negative eight equals negative three x squared. Then we have eight over three equals x squared. Then I square root it, it's basically just the square root of eight over three equals x. Voila, that's it, you're done. Okay, that's simple. Okay, find the value of c that makes this a perfect square trinomial well, here's the thing with this one, okay? I know that the bottom, if I do the magic X here, I know the bottom has to add to 12, and nine times blah has to give me. So it's nine times C, okay? So if I divide 12 by two, I get six and six. So nine times four mentally will give me, oops, uh, I want 36, because six times six is 36. So nine times C equals 36. Mentally, we can say that C is equal to four. Not difficult. Okay, that covers 19. 20, same idea like we just talked about, right? We're gonna multiply the eight and the four and then add the X's. So we get um, radical 32, X to the ninth. And we break down 32. That's 8 and 4. That's 2 and 2. Okay, 2 and 4, then 2 and 2. And notice how I've got two pairs of 2s. That comes outside. But now let's focus on the x's. Well, 5 plus 4 is 9. I'm going to divide that. Well, duh. Uh, we divide that by 2, and we get 4.5. So notice how I've got a 4, but then a 0.5. That means I need an x to the fourth on the outside and then an x inside. Whatever did not get paired from this that I broke down stays inside. So that means our final answer is going to be 4x to the fourth, then radical 2x. Voila, that's it. Okay, moving on now to 21. This one is as simple as you can get. Okay, we're gonna subtract 18 and six. Okay, that's gonna be 12. We're gonna subtract 17 and one, we get 16. We then square the 12 and then square the 16. Okay, so it's gonna be 144 minus 16 squared. It's 256. Oh, it's actually plus, my bad, boop and boop. So when I add that with 144, I get 400. 
and I can score it 400 mentally, it's 20. Because 20 times 20 is 400. 22 is almost a guarantee. It's almost a guarantee. Remember that these are both equal to x because those are my x-intercepts. So if I set x equal to negative 7 and then x equal to 3, I want to find out when it equals 0. Well, x minus, rather, x plus 7 equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0. Those are my factors. So here we go. I've got x plus 7, x minus 3. But it says to find the expanded quadratic, so we use the blocks method. Okay, boop, beep. Okay, x negative 3. I'll put x and 7 right here. Uh, x squared, negative 3x, um, 7x, and then negative 21. So that means it's x squared plus 4x minus 21. Voila. And we can say if it's an equation, it's equal to y. There you go. That simple. Two more questions. Okay, it is that simple, like I mentioned. Okay, I'll let you digest it for another few seconds. And here we go. Okay, last question here. Or two more questions, sorry. Um, we need to find the coordinates of the vertex. Okay, so if I want to find the vertex of this function here, well, I mean, for this one here, it's actually pretty straightforward. You can actually use Desmos to figure this out. So here we go. This one here, I'm going to let you guys use decimals if I give it to you. Y equals, now this is important, it's a fraction. Okay, so if you go back to the question, x divided by 5. And then plus, or sorry, minus x squared over 1,000. Okay, and now I'm looking for the vertex. So keep going, 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 keep going. Okay, it looks like it's somewhere up here, right there. Bam, 110. So we're looking for that vertex and we found it. The coordinates of the vertex, it's 110. And we can use Desmos to find it. Okay, last one, discriminant. Okay, remember it's b squared minus 4ac. That's what we're using. b is negative three, um, a is two, c is one. So we minus, not an equals. We get nine, because we squared the negative three, minus eight, and the discriminant is one, which means that there's two solutions for this. We are officially done with this, okay? Digest it, I'm gonna post this online as well, to be nice and to be fair. Um, so get ready, you have a class quiz on Monday, and I'll explain all those rules um, later on tomorrow, I'll post that tomorrow morning. Here we go, don't forget, a quiz I'll do on Monday as well. Have a great day, guys. Any questions, email me.